So let me draw our original structure once more. So I have a hinge joint, I have my bar, and I have my wire connected to the wall. And let's say this is making an angle of 30 degree, and I have my was here. Okay, and this is of 50 kilogram. That's the weight. Okay, all right, so let's say this point over here is point A, okay? And uh, what we can do is, we can draw free body diagram of point A because it seems all the, the forces are passing through that, right? So if we if we draw free body diagram of the point A, you know, which could be the point of connection, I have my tension in the wire, so that's at 30 degree. And then I have my weight, weight is, let's say G is equal to 10 meters per second squared then this would be 500 Newton, okay? And then we don't know whether the bar is under compression or tension. So if you draw free body at the bar, what does it look like? We have, you know, let's say, let's say this is in tension. Okay, we'll call it F, the F this way as well. Because this is a pin joint, you could have um, a vertical direction force as well. So let's say this is F sub X, and this is F sub Y. And as a result, you'll have, you know, what downward direction force F sub Y here as well, right? So, so we're looking at all those things, but if we assume that this is a slender bar, right? So this is a slender bar. So a cylinder is something that's very thin. In that case, you would not have transverse direction forces. In general, you would have them, but if you assume that they're a slender bar, let's make that assumption to keep this analysis simple, then the only forces that you can have are the forces along uh, longitudinal direction, right? And let's assume that they, they, the only force that we have is actually a tensile force, right? So that's F. So which means that from Newton's third law, the force here, oops. Okay, let me draw this again, actually. So we have the tension at 30 degree, and then from Newton's third law, the force F over here would be that way, right? So let's pick a coordinate system, X and Y. We're doing, we're now going to do equilibrium analysis. So sigma F equal to zero. So what are the forces? We have uh, minus F I hat, we have minus t cosine 30 i hat and then we have along j direction t sine 30 minus 500 and that's along j hat equal to zero so this is zero i hat plus zero j hat so what do we get we get f plus t cosine 30 is root 3 by 2 equal to zero and we get t by 2 because sine 30 is one half uh, minus 500 equal to zero so that gives us tension as 1000 Newton, right? And what, what do we get F from here? F is equal to minus T times root three by two. So that's minus 500 root three Newton. So from this actually, you can tell now that the force is in the opposite direction. So it's not in tension, but it's actually in compression because it, the number came out to be a, a negative one over here. So that means actually now you know that this this bar is actually not going to fail under under uh, yield or uh, fracture, but it's going to fail under buckling. That's the only thing that could happen with this. So it could buckle like this, basically. Okay. Now this is what we we are interested in the tension being one thousand newton. Okay. So the tension is one thousand newton. So we we know now that if you draw free body diagram this wire. Okay. So this is the wire. So you have this tension uh, over here, which is equal to one thousand newton tension 1000 newton and now if we want to design this wire all we have to do is you know go back to what we did you know for question three okay so we have to pick a factor of safety once we pick a factor of safety let's say i pick my factor of safety to be i don't know three then this is my rated load right so this is equal to f design i'll call it f sub d divided by f sub r for rated load so then f sub d f design load would be three times of rated load which we have computed as 1000 newton, so that will be 3000 newton, which means that you would have to pick your wire, uh, the diameter or the radius of the wire for a certain grade of uh, uh, for, uh, some sort of metal alloy, so that this, the normal stresses from the design load would be equal to the ultimate tensile strength. Uh, so for ASTM A36, we have seen that S sub U is equal to 400 megapascal, so that should be equal to the sigma, sigma is FD divided by pi D squared over four. So let me do this calculation. So FD is uh, 3000. So we get pi D squared over four equal to 3000 divided by 400 into 10 power six. 
so this would be equal to what d would be equal to let me say d squared equal to 12,000 divided by 400 into 10 power 6 and also pi over here right so this would be what uh, 30 right so that's 30 uh, so let me punch in the numbers so we get 30 divided by 3 power 6 divided by 3.14 and then I'll take a square root and I get d equal to 3.09 millimeter so that's the diameter that uh, that I would have for this for this case and of course there may not be 3.09 millimeter diameter if let's say we say that these are the standard sizes well this is all in inches so we really don't know uh, but let's say the next one is 3.5 millimeter in that case instead of picking this you'll pick 3.5 mm in that case okay